All right, welcome to lesson four. Today we're going to be talking about indicators. Um, so let's not waste any time. Let's jump right into it. So a lot of times when people get into trading, they learn about indicators and they start asking um, traders like, oh, what's, what's the best indicators that you guys use? And if I have to be honest, the best indicator is volume. Like, just keep it simple and um, you'll get further than adding a whole bunch of like RSI, MACD, um, Bollinger Bands, all this other stuff. Like, essentially the only indicator you really need is volume okay but there are other indicators that are are okay to use like i personally like to use the 9 ema i know a lot of swing traders that they use the smas um popular ones are like the 10 the 50 the 200 um a lot of traders also use the vwap um and volume profiles when i've messed with a little bit uh, that one gets kind of interesting so that's another indicator i like um but really just keep it simple like use one two max maybe three but don't crowd your charts with like a whole bunch of indicators. Like you're just gonna con end up confusing yourself, and you know they're gonna end up contradicting themselves. You know it's it's it starts hurting you more than helping you. So uh, be careful with adding getting too into too into indicators. Just keep it simple. Um, you want to be using volume, obviously, and then maybe pairing it with one of these, and that you're pretty much ready to go in terms of indicators. Um, so because we're not really relying on indicators that much because they don't work as well as people might uh, think when they're starting off. Uh, things we do really like to focus on are key levels and um, we like to think about key levels like supply and demand. So essentially support and resistance, it's the same thing as supply and demand. And this, we use supply and demand to kind of give us a map on the chart. So for example, if you have pre-market levels, like a pre-market high, and then um, in the morning the stock ends up going down and making uh, a low of the day. The low of the day would be the support, the um, pre-market high would be the resistance, and that kind of gives you a map of where you can expect the stock to be trading within uh, during the day. And if it breaks out above the resistance, then uh, that's bullish. If it breaks down below the support, that's bearish and et cetera, et cetera. So we use this like a map and uh, it's, it's important to view it as supply and demand because at least for me, it helps me kind of understand um, the charts more because I'm thinking of it in terms of, okay, people are buying at this zone or people are selling at this zone. And um, I don't know, I just, I, it, get, it gives me a better picture and it helps me trade better when I think of it in terms of supply and demand. Um, rather than support, just support and resistance, but at the end of the day, it's the same thing. So let's also talk about a little bit about charting. So, so I like to think of breakouts um, as being similar to waves, like waves you would see in the ocean. Um, and there's four main parts of a breakout. So there's the accumulation stage, there's the breakout stage, there's the emotionally crazed overextension stage, and there's the crash. So. In pretty much every breakout you see, or in every major breakout you see, you're going to see these four things play out. Uh, one thing that's very key with um, trading breakouts, which is one of the most profitable, thing, profitable things you can do, um, is a lot of people prioritize entries, but really, um, I mean, you do have to, you know, prior, like plan out your entry, but really, I would tell people to prioritize their exits over their entries because exits are a lot more important than your entries um, and I like to tell people like if you gave a professional trader 100 random trades so you were just like let's say you were flipping a coin to decide when to enter a trade if you did that for 100 trades and you know you handed the control over to a professional trader they would come out profitable um, at the end of those 100 trades even if they were completely random like they would figure out a way because professional traders prioritize exits and that's what makes them professionals. And a lot of times with charting, uh, really it's just about history repeating itself. Like you'll see patterns play out over and over again. And once you spend like a lot of time in front of the charts, you'll you'll kind of like subconsciously like uh, record these um, patterns in your head and you'll be able to uh, take advantage of them when you see them like are happening because like you you recognize the patterns that happen over and over again um and you get very good at this once you spend a lot of time in front of the charts like i've been training for two 
almost three years now and um i've seen thousands and thousands of charts and i can tell you that uh yeah history definitely repeats itself but yeah so i want to go through a couple examples of waves so this is on sq so this right here would be the accumulation state where it's just accumulating people are accumulating shares and then we finally get the breakout here over the key level and then you know it has a nice little run and then it gets overextended and then we get the crash just like a wave you know a wave builds up builds up builds up then it breaks out and then that's where people try to catch it and then it overextends and then it eventually it crashes almost all waves are going to end up crashing so those are the four stages and as a trader your role is to be very similar to a surfer you don't have to catch the entire wave you just have to catch a part of it and most times the tricky part is in the entry like anybody can draw this line and be like okay i'll buy here that's pretty simple i'm pretty sure most people can understand that like even a 10 year old if you tell them buy when it crosses this line they'll be able to do that the tricky part is knowing when to get out and the getting out part has to do a lot with your strategy it depends so some people might only scalp it and they'll get in get out right here and that's okay because they're only scalping it then they'll get back in here and get out right here another profitable trade then they'll get back in here they'll they'll sell right there like it depends on your strategy some people prefer holding the whole move or try to hold the get the whole move um you just have to play to your strengths to your personality and you have to know the pros and cons of your strategy. So if you're playing as a scalper and that's your game plan going into it, you have to understand that you're most likely going to miss out on a lot of the move, but you have to be okay with that because you're trading off, you know, not having like the overnight risk. You're trading that off for missing out on part of the move. Um, or let's say you are holding on for most of the move. So for you, it's going to be, you're trading off, you know, you're going to get a lot more of the move but you might risk giving back profits and you have to be okay with that. If you're not okay with looking at your account and seeing it go down after you've made, um, after you've tried to catch most of the move, then maybe you want to try a different approach. So you just have to know the pros and cons about it and um, be okay with that. Cause you're not, you're never going to get the perfect move. Like if somebody tells you you're going to get perfectly in here and perfectly out at the very top, like that's very, very unlikely. And you have to be okay with, only catching part of it like at the end of the day our goal is to make money and you can buy here sell here and make money you can buy here sell here and make money you can buy here sell here and make money um you can also buy here and sell here and make money but mo most often that's not gonna happen you're gonna end up buying here selling like down here and if that's gonna frustrate you then try a different strategy maybe a different approach where you scalp it or take it day by day you know it's up to you up to how you like to trade your strategy but yeah, that's one wave. Let's go on to another example. Here's another one on Tesla that we recently traded. I think we we got like a 200 to 300% trade on this. Um, but you see here the accumulation. And this is a lot cleaner accumulation. So the more cleaner the accumulation, usually the, um, the easier it is to play it. So this is accumulation. And then we get the breakout. And then overextension and then the crash. So yeah, let's go to another one. Now this one you can see it's a little bit more zoomed out so there's a lot more months that goes into this accumulation so from september 2020 to august pretty much of 2021 so a lot of months right there um but you just see it's just accumulating and there's and you could still trade it during this time right like you can buy here sell here and that's that's gonna be a huge trade you can sell here buy here huge trade you know there's still trades while it's accumulating but you know it still hasn't done the the major move and then once it finally gets a clean breakout, because you can see it tried here, but didn't really end up going. Here it finally got a clean breakout, and then look at this. Just huge, huge, huge run. Um, definitely got way overextended, crazy overextension, and then the crash. Um, so you can see one thing to note. The bigger the accumulation, the bigger the breakout's going to be. Like The Tesla breakout lasted, what, two days? This one lasted like two weeks almost, and... And the size was a lot bigger. So that's something to take note of. And um, it's it's still going to crash though. Like no matter how big the move is, it eventually gets a little crash. It's not always going to re retract the full way. Um, but it will pull back obviously. But yeah, also another thing to take note of is this was an all-time high. So all-time high breakouts are very notable. 
Um, the Tesla one was not an all-time high. It had a previous price action here. This one was an all-time high, so you can see it's a lot bigger. Um, all-time high breakouts are very notable. Um, so this is another one. So again, this one was accumulating for years, actually, from like 2017, mid-2017 to twenty mid-2020. So yeah, that's like a couple years there, three years almost. Um, so a lot of accumulation. And again, lots of opportunity even in there. But once you do get that breakout, like that breakout lasted like a year almost. So and huge, man. It went from 37 to 142. Huge, crazy. You can see the longer the accumulation, the bigger the breakout. But eventually, so it does end up crashing. And yeah, um, like I mentioned, longer accumulations, the longer the breakout. And all-time high breakouts are the best. This one was all-time high. This one was all-time high. This was the only one. Tesla one was not all time high, but there's still opportunity there. It's just not going to be as big. The breakouts are usually going to last a shorter amount of time and they won't be as crazy. But yeah, that's pretty much the lesson. So, key takeaways are you got to learn how to trade breakouts. I mean, that's one of the most profitable uh, patterns or um, setups to trade. Like, yes, I trade the high, previous high of day break. Um, but that's more like a scalping strategy while this is more like a, 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 a whole day hold or a swing trade strategy, but really like most of my money is made on, on these type of setups. Like, like I said, on this one, we caught like a 200% move on this one. We caught like a 500% move. Um, I never traded pen, but I'm sure a lot of people made a lot of money there. Like I said, all time high breakout is very key. Look for extended periods of accumulation. Um, one we actually had, which I was going to talk about in this lesson, was NVIDIA. It was a perfect setup, and I was going to record this video during the weekend, um, but I didn't end up having time. And so I'm recording this on Monday, and now it's already happened. But and you can see um, accumulation, key break, all-time high, massive move. Like, and like I said, I was going to post this. I was going to try to get this video out by Sunday or the weekend so you guys can would have seen this before it literally happened and then you guys would have seen it on your chart and be like dang like he actually knows what he's talking about um but yeah um like you can just see like the volume too like this is why we use volume as a key indicator look at that just massive volume setting up nice accumulation like when you see this type of volume right here that's pure accumulation right there like very very easy to tell that's they're just accumulating shares right here and then once you get the breakout you know huge move probably still going to continue going as well like at least 25 i'm looking at uh and depending on how we look there might get a pullback and then keep going or we'll have to see but yeah this was a good opportunity um that just happened today so i wanted to show you guys that but yeah learn this strategy learn this pattern learn breakouts and think of them as waves um or at least the four stages accumulation breakout over extension and a crash but yeah that's the lesson uh, hope you guys learned something. Hopefully that helped you guys out. If you guys have any topics or questions you guys want me to cover in future lessons, just let me know in the Discord. Um, but yeah, it's been me, Zero, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace. I say I love you. You say I love you too. Somehow it don't sound the same as when I say it to you. What's been going on? Can you tell me please? And I'm not trying to start a fight. I just want to believe. Seems these days it gets quicker every time that you leave. But it takes hours for you to come to me.